Quantum mechanics is a very rich study of physics, with some revolutionary results that have shaped our modern world into what it is today. Unfortunately, since a lot of the details are buried deep within the mathematics of the theory, along with the fact that quantum mechanics inherently goes against our intuition, miscommunications and misunderstandings commonly occur when regarding the subject. So let's address a few misconceptions that a lot of people have about quantum mechanics. Misconception 1. Quantum entanglement is the same thing as an interaction. To effectively describe what quantum entanglement is, perhaps it's best to start at what quantum entanglement is not. Say I have a red ball and a blue ball, and I put them in a box together. Now I shake the box up and put in a divider that ensures one ball is on the left side of the box and the other ball is on the right side of the box. Now I open the box and look at which colored ball is on which side. Unsurprisingly, if I see that the blue ball is on the right, then the red ball is always on the left, and vice versa. Now, why isn't this entanglement? Well, because I can say that the red ball was always red, and the blue ball was always blue. So if I drop in two red balls, put in the divider, then open the box, I'll always see two red balls. To see how entanglement works, say I have a system so that when I drop in two red balls, shake up the box, put in the divider, then open the box, I see one red ball on one side and one blue ball on the other side. Even though the side that each color ball can end up on will change, I always observe one red ball and one blue ball on opposite sides. Now, obviously the balls can change color, but I can never assign a history to each individual ball. In other words, I can never say that the red ball was always red, because it may have changed to blue, then back to red, and so on. All I know is that one of the balls ends up red, and the other must end up blue, and that there's a 50% chance of the red being on the right, and a 50% chance of it being on the left. So this is truly entanglement because I can't separate the states of the ball on the left and the ball on the right. I have to talk about the state of the whole system. Put more mathematically, the total wave function of the system can only be described as a linear combination of states such that I can't decompose it into a wave function for the ball on the right times a wave function for the ball on the left. Okay, so where does the misconception come into play? Well, say I only open the right-hand side of the box at first, then write down the color of the ball. I would measure red 50% of the time and blue 50% of the time. However, when I open the left-hand side of the box, I measure the color to be opposite from that on the right-hand side 100% of the time. Now, remember that I can't know what color the ball on the right is until I open the box, and similar for the ball on the left. It would seem that for the ball on the left to always be the opposite of the ball on the right, then a measurement of the color on the right causes the ball on the left to decide on a color. Therefore, there has to be an interaction between the two, right? Well, no. When I make the measurement, I collapse the wave function of the system. Since the wave functions of the two balls are inseparable, collapsing one simultaneously collapses the other. So it isn't that the ball on the right being red causes the ball on the left to be blue, it's just that the two measurements are correlated so that they're opposites. And as any statistician will tell you, correlation does not imply causation. Now, I have the pleasure of introducing Higgsino Physics to talk about the next common misconception of quantum mechanics. His channel has some incredibly engaging content paired with excellent animations. If you aren't subscribed to him already, I highly recommend doing so, and I'll link his channel in the description. Take it away, Higgsino. Thank you, Seb. Another common misconception in quantum mechanics is that it only governs the smallest objects. But now, let's see why you can always use quantum mechanics no matter what. Let me quickly talk about the double slit experiment and we'll get to the point. So if we have this setup here and we see wave fronts down here, the lines represent the top of the planar wave like this. After this slit here, the wave propagate radially outwards of course. And here the top again represents the top amplitude of the wave. And the wave could be light, it could be water ripples, or it could be the wave function in quantum mechanics. If the backside was a detector, we would not read something interesting. 
The pattern produced with this signal is just a normal distributed wave. And so the signal would look like this. The X axis is the position of the backside, the detector, and the Y axis is the intensity of the waves. Let's have a look at the double slit experiment. We will have constructive interference where the black circles meet. That's because they are wave tops and therefore they are in the same phase. I've indicated with errors where we see constructive interference. So if we again take a look at our measurement device, this is what we will observe. And here the same arrows are again, where we have constructive interference. The dotted line is the intensity of a wave going into one very small slit, as we saw in the beginning. Now finally to the point, as we talked about, this wave could represent light or water waves, or finally a wave function, then the peak would represent high probability for matter to be found here. This is shown in the great 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 video about Dr. Quantum double slit experiment, where we fire an electron gun and again we have a detector at the back. So now we have one slit and let's replace it by two and this is of course what we will see. Check out the video if you haven't seen it already. The physics that wish to describe matter as a wave is the de Broglie wavelength. An object's matter wave equals the Planck's constant divided by the mass times the speed. The wavelength in our setup would of course correspond to this distance here. As the de Broglie wavelength predicts a larger mass will equal in a smaller wavelength. So let's try and interfere with a heavier object instead. We can see of course the wavelength will get smaller. But notice what happens on the interference patterns. The peaks here of the oscillation gets much more intense. This animation shows what the detector would read if we have heavier and heavier masses and therefore shorter and shorter wavelength. The oscillations of the peaks in the detector get much more dense. We would see extremely many oscillations per centimeter if we tried doing this experiment of a 1 gram object. Nothing would have the resolution to distinguish these peaks and so if we try to measure something we would just see the average and therefore the classical limit we are used to. And therefore quantum mechanics can be used for more than just smaller objects. But it tends to get too complex and too accurate to be useful. Misconception 3. Collapsing a wave function requires a consciousness. Now that Higgsino gave an excellent description of the double slit experiment, let's take it one step further. Since we typically have to describe the particles going through the slit by a wave function, we can't determine which slit the particle actually travels through, just like we couldn't say which slit water waves traveled through. Now, what happens when we put a detector over each gate so that we will know once and for all if a particle passed through one slit or the other? When we do this, the interference pattern disappears and we just get two light spots. So it seems like the quantum effects are only there when we aren't looking at it. Does the quantum behavior disappear only when conscious beings observe it? Well, the answer is no. As it turns out, quantum systems tend to be incredibly delicate. Basically, if enough outside interactions come in, it will completely destroy the state of the system. To see this, let's take a closer look at our setup. How do the detectors work? Well, the particles have to interact with the detectors somehow or else we wouldn't see any signal. So it isn't really the fact that something with a consciousness is now looking at the system, it has everything to do with the fact that we've introduced some new interaction into the system which collapses the initial state. Misconceptions about quantum mechanics like these are very common even among physicists. But that's because quantum mechanics seems to go completely against how we intuitively think the world should work, as Richard Feynman, one of the great particle physicists of the 20th century put it, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics.